Welcome, good morning. Why don't you stand up on your feet, join with us, clap your hands, worship with us. I'm in.
We worship. We worship you this morning. We rejoice and we just come into the Lord, with thanksgiving, rejoicing in you. Adonai
receive your love. We receive your presence today. There's nothing like being in your courts. There's nothing like being in your temple, God. your presence. There's nothing like it, Father. And we just, we just want to not only adorn you with our worship, but God, we, we just want to be one with you and, and receive, Lord, your presence as we worship experience and encounter you. Let us encounter you, God. Have an encounter with your presence. Hallelujah. And nothing in this 
this world could satisfy. Yes, you are your the cup that won't dry. Say that again, nothing. And nothing in this world could satisfy. No. Yes, you are your the cup that won't run dry. Yes, we drink from your cup. Hallelujah. Yeshua, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, 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 oh. Your presence oh, is heaven to me. Come on, tell them your presence, your presence. Is heaven to me. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, oh, oh. your presence. of the Lord with his presence there's nothing else that this world can bring or satisfy with not like his presence there's nothing like his presence I need you Lord we need your presence Lord we need your presence so pour it out over us oh pour your presence over us like the rain like the rain like the rain like showers of rain we want an encounter with your presence we want to know more of it we want to know that you got for us Lord <laughs> we want to know what you've got in store for us father we want experience experience the goodness of experience the goodness of your glory we want to experience the goodness of your glory let us 
experience the goodness of your glory. Oh, we want to experience the goodness of your glory. So make us aware. Make us aware. We want to become more aware. whether you know it or not his presence is around us his presence is here his presence is with you whether you believe it or not his presence is with you and where his presence is there is liberty where his presence is there is freedom where his presence is there is joy and there is peace we want to know it we want to know it. And we don't just, we, we can't just hold on to, yes, we've experienced it before. We've tasted it before. But God, we know that there's still more. There's still more that you have in store for us. And more that we can experience. So as you draw us near to you, we open up our hearts and our lives and our minds and our spirits as you draw us near to you we open up we open up as you draw us near to you father we'll open ourselves up to you so draw us draw us near Draw us near to you. And Lord, we, we just say your presence is welcome in our hearts. Your presence is welcome in our homes, in our lives. Every day, your presence, your presence is welcome in our lives, Father. experience the goodness of your glory Lord cause we love, we love we love your presence oh yes Lord we know your presence changes the atmosphere changes the scenery changes everything your presence changes everything and we don't want to be the same I know I don't want to be the same I know I don't want to be the same I want to be who you see me to be I want to be who you've called me to be I want to say what you have me to say I want to do what you want me to do I want to be more like you, Lord So wrap us in your presence and your glory today Just wrap us, Father, in your presence this morning We want to receive from you And we want to be changed by you how many of you say amen and agree with me this morning that you just not only want to receive from him, but you want to be changed by him. You want to encounter with him. God, we want to be more like you. And we want to see what you have in store for us. We want to experience what you have in store for us, Lord. And we know that there's more. We just thank you, Father. And we worship you. And we honor you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, amen. Would you join us as we sing the Shema? Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Baruch 
שם כבוד, מלכותו לעולם ועד. Glad you're with us again today in this new year of 2021, second Shabbat, and a new sermon series. So I'm excited for this. We, were, we started last week looking at the book, at the epistle to the Ephesians, and we're going to, of course, continue with that today. So let's pray as we're diving into this. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this time of worship. Lord, thank you for... Uh, all the blessings that we, we receive from you, Lord, and how you, you're so good in, in helping us uh, to, li to, to live a life that pleases you. Lord, you don't just challenge us, but Lord, you, you give us so many tools and, and words of encouragement and in teachings uh, so that we are uh, successful and, and living a life that, that pleases you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, speaking into our lives uh, in general, thank you for, uh, for this time that we have, that we want to dedicate to you to really uh, listen carefully what you have to say. Sp speak to us now. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So, we, again, we, we are in our second week. Last week we looked at the background a little bit of, of uh, the, the, the city of Ephesus, the, the holy people of Ephesus. We talked about that uh, at length last week as well. Today, we're going to look at first chapter. We're going to uh, yeah, talk about the blessings, the spiritual blessings that God has for us in order to live a life that pleases God. I want to start with a little story. And it starts in Germany. It starts in Hamburg, which has a big harbor. And uh, a violinist, violinist his name is Fritz Kreisler. He just had an hour before his boat sailed, and he wandered around and got into this music shop and uh, looked at different things, probably the, the violins uh, especially, and, and this shop owner sees his violin in his hand, and, well, the, the, his own, like the, the one he came, the, the violin Chrysler, Fritz Chrysler, came into the store with, into this bag, and, and this shop owner is just curious. He says, hey, what you got there? What's, what's the violin that you have? What, what's your violin look like? Can I see? And he opens it up, and it's a very special violin. And he says, oh, wow, uh, you have Fritz Chrysler's uh, violin. What's going on? Where did you get this one? Did, did you steal it? And he calls the police, uh, and Fritz Kreisler is like, he's looking at this, at the times, like, my, my, my ship is, is uh, sailing off with, without me. No time for explanations when, when the policemen come in. Uh, he just says, hey, can I just have my violin back real quick? I'm going to show you that I am Fritz Kreisler. And he takes the violin back, and he plays one of his uh, most famous uh, songs, and or pieces that he's known for and ask them now you satisfied and did they stare at him and just are amazed that Fritz Kreisler actually walked into the store Fritz Kreisler himself and played on his own violin one of his most famous pieces so yes they were satisfied and they let him go and he hopefully got his ship his boat uh, in time. But this is what we're talking about. Knowing what you are blessed with. Knowing what you have. Knowing what God gave you. That is important. And uh, that's so important that Paul starts off this epistle to the Ephesians with that message. He says, you are holy. He greets them as the holy people of Ephesus. And then he goes into the next verses, just showing them off how blessed they are, blessed by God. And we're going to start off here in Ephesians 1, verse 3, and it says, Blessed 
be the God and Father of our Lord the Messiah, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in the Messiah. So the one who blesses us is God, and he blesses us abundantly. And that is really just continuing what, we, what, what the Bible started off with, with, with what God started off with, with, as he's walking with his people and getting them closer and closer to him. So in Genesis 12, verse 3, it says, and in, all, and in you all families of the earth, and in you, Abraham, in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. And now we know that the, 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 the biggest blessing that we received, and, and I believe this is what this, was, this is talking about, the biggest blessing, we are all blessed through Yeshua, the Messiah. He is the biggest blessing to us that we received. But he continues to bless us. And this is what we're looking at. And there, there are at least eight blessings uh, in the next verses that I want to point out. Some we're going to go a little bit deeper. Some I, I mentioned just uh, very briefly because we talked about these at length in, in our sermon series on uh, We Believe. So let's continue reading. Let's continue reading at verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So that's another blessing. He chose us that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption, which is another blessing we're looking at, as sons by Yeshua the Messiah to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us, accept, uh, but by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, another blessings, redemption, blood, the forgiveness, another blessing of sins, according to the riches of his grace, another blessing, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, another blessing here, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in the Messiah, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, here is another blessing, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, to, he, to we who first trusted in the Messiah should be should be to the praise of his glory. In him also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, the final blessing of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So I tried to point out these blessings as we as we read through it. And here, here is blessing number one. We are chosen. We are a chosen people. We are elected uh, by God. And uh, the chosen people obviously reminds us of, or at least reminds me of, of the people of Israel uh, who God chose. And I think it works really the same way where, where God chose a people. They, they didn't do anything special. They weren't anything special. But God selected these people. God chose Abraham to start with. And, and he chose them to do something special with them, to use them for his glory so that they would make uh, the Gentiles uh, curious of, of who God is and draw them into the family and uh, get them a part of the family as well as, as believers in him. So that's really the whole point of, of why selecting the, these uh, special people to get others involved too. And this is why uh, God chose us as well, chose you and me to get others included in this family. This is not 
uh, a family that is not a body that is capped. Here is the number. We're not going to go any bigger. The whole goal is to get people from outside into this family. And God chose you and me to do that. He chose you and me to be part of this. He chose you and me to understand who God is and what Yeshua did for our lives. He gave us the understanding and the faith. Even more important than the understanding is, is the faith that we have in him. So that is a wonderful blessing that you and I hopefully received the blessing of, of being chosen, the blessing of his election. And now, as we continue reading, we get to the second blessing, and we read in verse 5, just want to read this again, having predestined us to adoption as sons by the Yeshua, the Messiah. We are adopted. We are adopted as sons. And now, ladies, it doesn't say we are adopted as sons and daughters. Now, we, we all understand and believe that God doesn't make any distinction because, between uh, male and female when it comes to, uh, to, to his redemption and all that. But I, I want to go a little bit into why Paul says here uh, sons and not daughters. Because that's, it's just important to, to, I think it's important and it's interesting to, to understand and always look at the Bible in its context and this whole background. So who, who are the first recipients of, of this letter? Well, it's the people in Ephesus, uh, in, in Minor Asia, it's, it's where Turkey is now, ruled by, by the Romans. And in Paul's days, childless people would adopt uh, to pass on the family name, to pass on their inheritance. And the, the thing is, that if they, yeah, e even citizenship uh, of, the, of their parents would be able to, like, they would be able to pass on the Roman citizenship to their adopted child. The problem is here, and this is why Paul says, you are adopted as sons, is because it wasn't as m meaningful to girls when they were adopted. They didn't get all this. They didn't, they didn't get the inheritance. They didn't get uh, the citizenship. This was only uh, for, for, for the boys, for, for the males who, who were adopted. They, the girls didn't have the right granted that, that boys received here. So this is why, out of this context, he says, you are adopted as sons. You have all the rights. You have a new citizenship. Your citizenship is in heaven. Your adoption, because you're adopted as sons, comes with all these rights. It comes with all these uh, rights of an inheritance. It comes with all the rights of of being in this family and not halfway in like girls back in the day. So this is really uh, why, why God made this, uh, why Paul made this distinction. He was speaking in, in this context and pointed out, hey, when you're adopted, no, you're adopted with all the blessings, with, with all the advantages it comes with. Speaking of which, speaking of inheritance, and this is where we're going to jump a little bit. We're going to actually jump to blessing number seven, which is in verse 11, where it says that we receive an inheritance from God. Inheritance comes, uh, it's a blessing. What, what is this inheritance? What is this inheritance that we, are, that we hear, we are heirs, of God, we have the right of, of receiving something. We are in, in other in, in Romans it says we are co heirs with, with the Messiah. We share in sufferings, and we share in His glory. What is this inheritance that we receive? What is this inheritance the Bible is talking about? Well, in short, it is heaven. 
It's a combination of all the promises that God gave us, the combination of eternal life, uh, the treasures in heaven, all that that you can think of that God promises us uh, for, for the time with him when we are uh, dwelling in his holy place. This is what our inheritance is. And in First Peter one through in, in First Peter chapter one, for, verse four, it says, "An inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you." It it is incorruptible. You can't destroy it. Here on earth, everything has a lifespan. Uh, for some things, it's it's longer. Some things are, it, it takes maybe even hundreds or thousands of years really to to uh, to break or to to uh, value to go down or whatever. But looking at flowers, looking at car, looking at houses, uh, looking at your iPhone uh, or your watch, most of these things uh, really get slowly destroyed. Some of the things over, over some time may gain some value, but it's really just because of uh, it's, it's getting more rare. But point is here, we are used to, uh, to losing things. To, to, we are used that, that things are getting destroyed or old or stop working. This is something that we won't experience with our inheritance. In heaven, things are impossible to be destroyed and things will be whole and complete. Undefiled, it is 100% perfect. When we are in heaven, when we are with God, it is going to be 100% perfect. Here also, as a contrast, we don't see this here on earth. Uh, we, we, always, we, we may be striving for, for perfection, but we, we never receive the whole thing. But God's dwelling place, God's inheritance for us is going to be perfect. It does not fade away. Flowers fade, money depreciates. Again, a few things gain value over time, but not because they become greater, more because uh, they, they get more rare. It's the opposite with God. He says in Revelation 21, verse 5, but behold, I make all things new. He doesn't even just keep it as it is. He doesn't keep us as we are. He makes us new and he makes us perfect when we receive our inheritance. It's reserved. It's reserved for you. Nobody can take it. Nobody else can claim uh, your spot. It's reserved for you. And I, I'm, I'm excited. I think this is going to be, uh, this is, it's going to be awesome. And, and just looking at these things, uh, perfection uh, and, and all that, and, and whole, uh, complete, I, I think that's it's just going to knock us out of our socks. So I'm excited for that. And... There, isn't that a great promise? Isn't there, there a great promise that we, we will receive an inheritance? We will receive something. We, we have the right to receive because we are part of, this, of the body of believers. We are part of God's family. And God has, has so many things for us. This here on earth, uh, you may enjoy it, and I hope you, you enjoy this time and this journey here, but it's going to be even better, so much better. So another blessing is grace, and that is in verse 6, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given in the one he loves. He gave us grace. And we're going to jump over uh, the redemption through his blood and forgiveness and, and, and yeah, the redemption uh, that, that all are based on grace. If, if, the, if it weren't for grace, all, all these 
uh, things wouldn't wouldn't be even possible. But the the foundation for for God's love, for His forgiveness, for the blood that was shed, is grace. So that is an, another wonderful blessing that you and I receive grace uh, to live a life that pleases God. To to actually start with it. If, if it weren't for grace, he wouldn't even we wouldn't even have the option or, or the possibility of of even trying. And yet we, we we fail so many times and he graciously gives us another try and another try and helps us to yeah live this life that pleases God. So we're gonna jump over uh, the redemption, Yeshua's blood that was shed for for you, for me, for the forgiveness of our sins. We we covered that in the last weeks, I, I think, plenty. Uh, so we're going to look, we, we appreciate these things and, and we love it and it's super important. But we're going to jump to receiving wisdom to understand the mystery of his will. Wisdom is, is something, it's not intelligent, it's it's wisdom way deeper to understand things that God is, is revealing to us over time. Uh, sometimes, and we, we see this in the Bible, sometimes it wasn't a time to be revealed uh, back in the days and it's being revealed now or at some point and it's the same uh, with, with what you're experiencing in your life. Sometimes we're, we're standing in front of mysteries. Some, sometimes life is a mystery or... or things, what we hear even in the Word, or God speaks to us, our mysteries, and are being revealed on the spot through His wisdom, sometimes even later on. So, that is another awesome blessing. He gives us wisdom, and uh, in, in one of our community groups, uh, we, uh, in, in James, the very beginning of the book of James, it, it talks about uh, ask for wisdom, and you will receive. And uh, that is another thing that we should always remember. Go for wisdom. It's it's so much bigger. It's it's it, it's gonna help us in so many different ways uh, throughout our life, throughout the the life that we live to please God. Finally, receiving the Holy Spirit. That is another, another blessing that, that we can't thank God enough for. The Holy Spirit, I think, is, is the one uh, that, that holds all these uh, things together, that, that brings us together, that, that, that reminds us uh, of, of redemption, of the blood, uh, of forgiveness, that brings things up to the surface. Uh, it reminds us, it encur he, the Holy Spirit encourages us the Holy Spirit ministers to us. Holy Spirit reminds us of, of, of the grace that we receive and reminds us of the inheritance that we receive as well. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22 says, it states that God sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. A pledge and a guarantee for the inheritance that we will receive. Receiving the Holy Spirit is, is a guarantee. It, it's being served as a guarantee for you, for me, for, for God's goodness, for His blessings, for your, for our inheritance. Going back to, to the story from the beginning with um, the, the violinist, he knew exactly what to do. But when his identity was questioned, he knew, okay, I know what I'm capable of doing. I know my blessing. I, I get my violin out and I just show them who I am. And I want to encourage you with, with that story. Know who you are and know what you are blessed with. That will get you through, 
through the challenges, that will get you through, uh, through the day, that will get you through uh, the difficult seasons in your life, that will get you through the good seasons too. It's good to know, good to understand who you are, where your blessings are, and what you and I receive from God. Let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you for, for these wonderful blessings. And Lord, there is, we could name so much more. That there is so much more that you are blessing us with, Lord. But looking at these uh, fundamental blessings that you have for us, Lord, that help us through the day, that help us to, to live a life that pleases you, live, us, live a life that, that is holy. We just can't thank you enough for that, Lord. Lord, help us to, to understand more and more who we are, to, to work on our DNA, in our, in our identity, to, to really take that in, to, uh, to pull it out whenever uh, we are challenged, whenever it's important, uh, whenever we need it, whenever somebody else needs it, Lord. Lord, we, we, we thank you, Lord, that you're uh, challenging us, that you have certain expectations uh, for us. Lord, but, but overall, you, you came to us first, Lord. You, you blessed us first, and then, then in order to, to live up to your expectations, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you for your love. Lord, you don't just throw us into something but you deeply care for us. Lord, we thank you for your, for your grace. Lord, if it weren't for your grace, I don't know. I, I wouldn't be here, and I don't think any of us would be here. But you love us so much. You love us so much that you want us in your, in your family. You want us. You, you chose us, Lord, to, to be with you. And uh, to spend eternity with you, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for your love. And let these be reminders. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to remind us of who we are and how good you are and what we have in you. In Yeshua's name, amen. I want to bless you as we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his shalom, his peace. Amen. Have a wonderful week.